Yes, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. In this video, we are going to talk about tooth abnormalities. What are tooth abnormalities? These are irregularities we find in the teeth. Remember, we talked about what the characteristic of each tooth. But we may find it is not the one we are getting in the patient on physical examination. So we are getting, we are learning different abnormalities we can find in different individuals. These ones can be in terms of size, in terms of number, in terms of shape or form. Let's begin with size. What do we mean by this? Size. There are sometimes when you find the, the tooth is smaller than the actual size. A smaller tooth is that uh, if the tooth is small, that condition we call it micro. From the word micro, small, micro donchia smaller than normal or a smaller tooth if at all it is bigger then we call it macro donchia in terms of number we talked about that a person is supposed to be having 32 teeth, in other words, a permanent tooth, a permanent dentition, we are supposed to be having 32 teeth, meaning in the lower arch, 16, in the upper arch, 16. When you divide into quadrants, 8, 8, 8, 8 in each quadrant. For primary dentition, we said we have 20 teeth in number, 5 in each quadrant. But we may find a situation where we have teeth that are more than this number. This is what we call supernumerary teeth. The teeth which are more than the number. These are supernumerary teeth. And this we are saying that they result from during odontogenesis when there is extra division or proliferation of the dental lamina. This is where we are going to find the teeth are more than the number. For example, mesioden. Mesioden, when we have our centrals, a mesioden will always be found in the middle there. an extra tooth in between the anterior teeth or these incisors. Then we have for the case of molars. We talked about molars before. For the case of molars, you know molars are the, they are the last or the big teeth we have towards the end. So we can have Teeth which are big, also the uh, the what you call distal molars, what you call palamolars. These are really different. All of these are supernumerary teeth, but distal molar. If at all we have, remember in our nomenclature, suppose this is a four six, a four seven and 4.8 a distal molar is distal remember what you talked about distal mesio distal is away from the midline so a distal molar will be a fourth molar distal molar what do we mean by a paramolar a paramolar is also a supernumerary tooth, an extra, an extra tooth. But for it, 
If I told maybe this is usually they are found in Markzilla. Suppose this is a two six, two seven, two eight. A distal molar can be here. Distal molar. But now our paramolar paramolar can be either baco or parato. It can be pressed towards the cheek, what we call baco or parato towards the what? The parrot. This is what we call a para. Para alongside. Para alongside in the sides. But for this tomorrow, is in line with the others, but it, uh, towards the end or away from the midline. It is in line with this, but towards the heart, the end. But paramora, but paramora is either this side or inside. So these are different. They are all supernumerative. This one is in line with others, distal, but this one is either baco or paratale blessed. There is what we call an impaction. What is an impaction? We are saying for an impaction. An impaction is a tooth that is completely or partially unerupted due to obstruction of either a tooth, a bone, or a soft tissue. It means that we are supposed to have, if this is our oral cavity, we are supposed to have all these teeth appear in the oral cavity. But we find we can have a tooth under here. It is either completely not able to be seen in the oral cavity because it has been stopped by either a bone, soft tissue, or even the other tooth. When we go into different classifications, among many classifications of impactions, using one classification which is easy to understand, we can find that when the, the other teeth are all okay, we can have, for example, some teeth, especially maybe, maybe the third molar, it can be horizontally, Impacted. This is horizontal impaction. It can face this side or it can face this side. That is horizontal impaction. It is not able to come to the oral cavity or to erupt to the oral cavity. But we have maybe a 4 7, a 4 6, they are there. But this 4 8 has failed, has failed to erupt into the oral cavity. Another one, this is now one type, horizontal. We can also have another one, when it has grown in a real position, but has failed to reach. Now, this is what? Vertical impaction. We can also have another type, when it is undulated at an angle, we can call it this one call it mesio. Mesio angular impaction. Because this the crown is facing the distal part of this tooth or the crown is facing the midline. If the midline is here. And it can be opposite 
what we call distal distal angle impaction if it is facing the other side this is a four seven and now it is facing the other side so all of these we are showing that it the tooth is in its time of eruption is due but it has failed to reach the oral cavity to erupt into the oral cavity due to, to obstruction of a bone or a soft tissue or another tooth we shall read, read or shall discuss impactions in the details because it is a separate chapter Previously, previously, we had talked about a tooth and we said from here to here, this is a crown, is covered by enamel. And from here, Remember we say from here to here this is the crown from here to here this is the rope from here to here is covered by cement and from here to here is covered by what? Enamel. And I also discussed that the tooth is held in a soft bone called alveolar bone. Called alveolar bone. So, what are we talking about? This is alveolar bone. alveolar bone and this is cementum so we are saying for ankylosis we are meaning the fusion of a tooth to the alveolar bone the fusion of the tooth here with the alveolar bone it is supposed to be held by fibers but instead it can fuse when this when it fuses this tooth when we talk about tooth extraction this will make extraction of such a tooth very difficult ankylosis is disadvantageous but at some point as we continue learning for example when we have a version a tooth moves out of the of the mouth maybe due to a fracture or due to a punch or due to a trauma you can fix it again as we had said if it is a permanent uh, permanent tooth you can fix it again it will hold not because the periodontal fibers have been have been uh, regained by this tooth only it will be by what ankylosis so ankylosis, it can sometimes be advantageous, but if it happens, it can make tooth extraction difficult. But in that, we are saying that it is the fusion of the cementum to the alveolar bone or the tooth to the alveolar bone. We shall talk about it in details when we reach in tooth extraction. Anodontia, this is the absence of teeth. This can be partial, this can be partial, or it can be complete. 
So when we are lacking some teeth, this can be partial anodontia. When we are lacking all, it can be complete anodontia. Hypodontia. Hypodontia is saying lack of development of one or more teeth. All this is under anodontia. What do we mean by oligodontia? There is a situation where you find there are more teeth missing, more than six teeth, either six or more teeth, or, or more than six. This condition is not any other condition, but it is called oligodontia. Oligodontia is a lack of six or more teeth. When you lack six teeth or more, that is oligodontia. We said anodontia, we are lacking teeth. It can be partial or complete. But now, it can also be pseudo. Pseudo. You know what you mean by pseudo in science? Pseudo. In the courts, the teeth are absent clinically, but they can be developed, but down. We have to talk about impaction. We said for impaction, a tooth is not seen in the oral cavity. It can be seen partially or completely not seen. It is obstructed from, from being seen in the oral cavity due to a soft tissue, bone, or another tooth. Or it can even be cysts, as we shall discuss. So for pseudo, a tooth is there. But maybe we have delayed eruption or impaction. This one will seem as if we do not have what? A tooth. And that is what we call it, why we are calling it pseudo. We have what we call false anodontia. You look at an individual without any tooth. But you find this person maybe he had teeth before and they were lost. This person is not congenital or is not having a true anodontia, but we are calling it false anodontia. False anodontia because all the teeth were extracted. In terms of shape, we can also have irregularities of the teeth in terms of shape. We have what you call fusion. Fusion, the two teeth join, two tooth dams join to form a tooth. And therefore we shall have a macro, a macro tooth. The tooth will be big because there are two buds which would have made two separate teeth, but they are joining to form one. Fusion, you know this terminology. For germination, it is the opposite. Germination, we are having tooth buds split into two. And when they appear, they appear as if one is coming, is behind the other. But they are from one root. So in other words, for this one, for fusion, there are two, two tooth buds that are broken. Sorry, that are split to form two. But for germination, I beg your pardon, for fusion, we are saying we are having two germs forming one large tooth, macro. But for germination, we are having two, two teeth, we are having two teeth that are splitting. We are having one tooth, tooth bud, splitting to form two one tooth bud one tooth bud splits in two and appears it appears as if there are two teeth one is behind the other but there it is one tooth with one root
We have another one called taurodontism. Taurodontism is an enlarged crown. The crown is longer. The crown is longer than the root. You find the roots are very short, but the crown is long in relation to the what? The root. Another one is peg, peg shaped lateral incisors. Usually, this is in incisors. And the incisors. Usually, lateral incisors, you find we have the central and the central, but these are small, small before we reach on the what on the canine on both sides so this is what we call pig shaped lateral incisors it is also an irregularity we have hudson's incisors hudson's incisors hudson's incisors these are also irregularities. When we are advising mothers, we advise them to treat diseases when they are pregnant. Among the effects of congenital diseases, for example, congenital syphilis, we shall have a lateral incisors which are notched. You find This is as a result of congenital syphilis. They are called Hudson's incisors. Hudson's incisors they are also abnormality due to congenital syphilis. Then we have concrescence. Concrescence, we are having fusion of teeth by the cementum. We said, like we said before, the cementum this is the enamel and this is from here to here this is the cementum the part of the rock. So when we say fusion of the teeth by the cementum it means what is fusing they are the roots. The roots are what? Are fusing. That is what? Concrescence. We have concrescence fusion of teeth by the cement. In other words, the roots are the ones that are what? Are fusing. We have what you call enamel pulp. Enamel pulp is not in the enamel. But it is, we are saying this is a droplet of what? Of the enamel, but is not found in the enamel. It will be found around here. You will find something solid around here. This is an enamel pearl. Hard, but is, this is the usual point of what? Of enamel pearl. Of course, you know, the enamel stops here, and from here to here, this is the what? The cement. Then last we have the illustration. The illustration, we are, they were having undulation of the root. So the illustration is the undulation of the what? Of the root. Thank you so much for watching. This has been abnormalities of teeth kindly share this video to the other students or learners subscribe to our youtube channel if you have not thank you